Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing this very new study that just came out that seems to create even more mysteries for the so-called Fermi paradox. The paradox of not really seeing any extraterrestrial superintelligence somewhere out there, traveling the galaxy, discovering and colonizing new planets, and forming these large complex societies that should be visible from very far away distances. Because if we ignore the media, and if we actually look at some of the scientific analysis from, for example, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Community, or a lot of other scientific papers, including this most recent paper that came out only a few months ago, which took a look at roughly around 60 million different star systems out there, we'll once again find ourselves in a situation that suggests no one is really talking to anyone else. There doesn't seem to be a lot of super complex civilizations producing a lot of different types of communication, and, well, for the most part, at least for now, we seem to be alone. And so that is the natural of the Fermi paradox. But the most recent study that I'm discussing today, the one that, as always, you can find in the description below, goes a little bit further. Because it sort of makes the paradox even more paradoxical. What this particular study investigated is the idea of the ability of alien species, a complex alien species, to propagate through a galaxy. And they've discovered that even using conservative values, a typical civilization that's already pretty complex should be able to spread through the galaxy, as you kind of see in this particular simulation, relatively easily. And they make a pretty strong argument and a pretty interesting analysis out of this. And so I figured this is a perfect opportunity to discuss this and also to discuss some of the shortcomings of the study. But first, let's start right here. The visual representation of the famous Kardashev scale, created by the Soviet astronomer back in 1964. And according to the scale, there are three different levels of a typical civilization advancement. We have the Type 1 civilization, that's basically the planetary civilization that's able to use pretty much most of the energy from a typical planet. Then, once the limits of energy are reached, the civilization becomes Type 2 civilization and starts using the entire energy of the star system. At this point, it becomes what's known as the Type 2 civilization, and that's essentially where you usually find structures like the Dyson Swarm or the Dyson Ring or the Dyson Sphere that allows the civilization to capture the energy of the star itself. And then, according to Kardashev, a civilization is going to reach the limit here as well and become a Type 3 civilization and will begin using the energy of the entire galaxy. And so that's kind of how he back then thought about it. And to some extent, the scale is still even accepted today, especially when it comes to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Okay, quick side note. I personally do not agree with this scale for one simple reason. Bias. And also, zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, if you've never heard this term before, refers to the idea of the spirit of time. Kardashev lived in the Soviet Union and he developed the scale in the 60s. This is when the country was growing bigger and bigger, it was building bigger and bigger projects, and it was also requiring more and more energy. It was quite natural back then to assume that it's going to sort of continue on the same scale and at some point we're going to start using the energy of the planet, the energy of the solar system, and the energy of the galaxy. However, it's a very simplistic approach to how a civilization very likely advances. We cannot possibly predict or even understand how any of this happens. As a matter of fact, for the humanity at least, all of these advances are a very recent thing. We've lived without really developing almost at all for thousands of years and have only started to produce and also use these different types of energies in the last hundred years or so. But that's just as a quick side note. Let's move on. Let's go back to the scale because in this paper the scientists focused on two types of civilization. A type 2 civilization that then slowly becomes a type 3 civilization. The kind of a civilization that should be visible from really far distances if we were to use some of the modern techniques in trying to locate various signals across the galaxy. And so in this paper, which I found to be extremely fascinating, the scientists took a very conservative approach. First of all, no warp drives, no faster than light travel. And also no wormholes, no travel of any kind that sort of violates our current understanding of science. Which by the way, of course, is its own topic in some of the future videos on the channel, so make sure to subscribe. So if there's no wormholes and no faster than light travel, how are the ships going to be traveling? In their study, they limited the travel speed at approximately 10 km per second, or well, basically roughly around the same speed we would expect a typical spacecraft to travel from, for example, planet Earth to some other planet like Jupiter. In other words, they really sort of focused on making this as realistic as possible. And because of this, naturally, traveling will take a very, very long time. But in this case, they limited the travel time as well. 
Every one of the ships in their simulation was only allowed to travel maximum distance of 10 light years. That's slightly more than double the distance to the nearest star to us, Proxima Centauri. And none of the ships here were allowed to travel for more than 300,000 years, because after that the ship was considered to be lost and the mission was considered to be failure. Although 300,000 years is actually still a pretty long time, we don't cruelly even know if any of our technology can survive that long. On top of this, the migration ships, or the civilization ships, were only launched every 10,000 years. And upon landing, no civilization was allowed to last more than 100 million years. And so in a nutshell we have a lot of slow moving civilization ships, what you would call a generation ship, trying to colonize as many stars as possible, with one very important addition to all of this. These ships, these civilization ships would only be launched if the nearby star came close enough for the ship to reach the star in time. Because we don't have any faster than light travel or any wormholes here, the only way for these ships to reach another star system was if the star system actually came close enough to the parent star. Which is actually a concept I recently mentioned in another video you can check out somewhere right there. And so here we have this really interesting scenario. And the question is, how well will it go? Are these civilizations going to go extinct? Or is the civilization going to spread across the entire galaxy? And so here's what we have. We have the initial place right there, sort of similar to where our sun is located. And as the stars move around the galaxy, and as one planet after another gets settled, at some point, this becomes an exponential growth, and then within only a few million years, the entire central region of the galaxy is actually going to be extremely overpopulated, which by itself made this an extremely interesting discovery. Watch how fast all of this happens. The entire central region basically becomes full of these very interesting civilizations, all of them stemming from a single origin, and all of them very likely possessing the technology to communicate and to transfer signals and to very likely hear each other. But, as you saw from the previous study I showed you in the beginning, this is not the case for the Milky Way galaxy at all. As a matter of fact, no one seems to be calling back home and no one seems to be sending any signals. But okay, not everyone. Do check out the side of video about the signal we might have received from Proxima Centauri. But that's something we'll discuss in another video because there have been some updates. Anyway, so... This is definitely not happening in the Milky Way, at least not right now. But it is a very interesting discovery, and especially interesting because of the way that the civilizations use the technologies available to us right now to spread across the galaxy. Now naturally we don't have any generation ships yet, and we're not really going to have a star next to us for another 2 million years, but if we wait long enough, the stars will actually come close enough. And one of the more important discoveries here is that because generally speaking, the distances between stars in the center of the galaxy are much closer, and because there are more chances for a lot of stars to come close to one another, that's really why the central region here becomes so overpopulated so quickly. And so this study does suggest that we should be looking inside the centers of galaxies if we want to one day discover some advanced civilization somewhere out there. Although this does kind of go against some of the other studies that suggest that the center of a galaxy is typically a very dangerous place because of constant supernova and constant emissions from the central black hole that produces a lot of energy that can actually strip the planet of any life. On top of this, some of the shortcomings from the study are, well, the fact that they kind of believe a civilization can survive for 100 million years. Remember, the human civilization as we know it is at best a few thousand years old. Although technically speaking, the information age has only started less than 100 years ago. And so the assumption here is that we can survive long enough for a nearby star to get close enough to us so we can kind of jump onto it. But that is a pretty big assumption. Nevertheless, mathematically at least, this does present us with a very interesting model on how a civilization can hypothetically migrate through the entire galaxy and where we can potentially find a successful civilization somewhere out there. With the biggest predictor in this case being the star density. The more stars there are in the region, the more likely the civilization is going to be able to hop from one place to another. Furthermore, what makes this simulation particularly exciting is that this whole process here only took approximately 1 billion years. And remember, the universe is about 13.7 billion years old. And the peak of star formation and also the peak of formation of planets similar to planet Earth was very likely billions of years ago. So the chance that these existed sometime in the past is actually still there. We're just not sure if they still exist today. 
But I still like the approach they took in the study, with the idea behind colonization and civilization expansion being slow and steady wins the race. Instead of racing for a new star and instead of creating technology that allows us to travel faster in the light, which might actually not even exist, in this case, this advanced alien civilization simply just waits long enough and then jumps onto the nearest star. But if something like this happened in the history of our own galaxy, there's a big chance now that a lot of different planets in the center of our galaxy are just filled with ancient ruins of various civilizations. It might have even happened more than once, at least according to this model and according to the simulations established by these scientists. Although it still doesn't change the fact that after observing many of these stars in the center of the Milky Way for many years now, the scientists still have not seen or heard anything. And so the Fermi paradox is more paradoxical than ever before. But we'll talk more about a lot of these topics in some of the future videos because there have been a lot of brilliant studies in the last few months. On that note, check out some of the other videos and some of the other studies I mentioned. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who wants to learn about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt, by joining the channel membership, or by supporting this channel on Patreon. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.